All right, everybody, welcome back to the New York Stock Exchange. We're here at the Buttonwood Podium overlooking the Options Exchange. My name is Dave Vellante, and you're watching AI Factories, Data Centers of the Future, and we're thrilled to have Mindy Kinsella here. She's the Vice President of Corporate Strategy at Dell and a longtime friend and a great market watcher. Mindy, awesome to see you. Thanks so much for coming in remotely to our studio. All right, so let's just get right into it. We've been talking all week here uh, about the trend toward on-prem AI, uh, what's happening in the on-prem stack. So you are a former Gartner analyst. You look at the market. What's and of course you're in strategy now. You've looked at the market uh, for cloud as an analyst, and you're definitely helping shape Dell strategy now. What does that look like? What's the on-prem and hybrid AI you know opportunity look like? What do deployments look like? What's the migration, you know, bringing data or, or AI to the data? What are you seeing out there? Yeah, well, first, it's really great to be here. As you mentioned, you know, I love these emerging technology conversations, really enjoy talking with customers and understanding where and how they're going to intersect those technologies, how they'll think about them, and really how they can use them to drive value. As you mentioned, I started back as a cloud analyst, and so I spent a lot of time with enterprise organizations just seeking to understand what exactly are they going to do with public cloud and how are they going to think about it? How will they think about their on-premises data centers and what will evolve to an on-prem cloud-like architecture? And what I found is I worked with so many of those customers is cloud at least was its tops down mandate. It was like, let's get some things in the cloud. Let's check some boxes. You know, then we'll put in place this decade long strategy to get to where we think we want to be. When I think about AI and I talk to customers, it looks completely different. I um, mean, you know, my team, you mentioned corporate strategy within Dell. We do a lot of external research and we spend a lot of time talking with customers. And in a recent survey that my team had fielded, this is global, it was large enterprise organizations. That we found in a pretty large N, I should add, a large sample size, we found that 58% of survey respondents have already successfully transitioned from POC into production. That is a staggering number, 58%. And when we think about that survey, because this is one that we're doing year on year, and we're actually doing it more frequently because of how quickly the market is moving. Last year, customers had said they were 64%. So you kind of take two things from that. One is that it looks like it's slowed, but not really, because what we're finding is there's a bit more maturity in what they understand. A year ago, a lot of customers, when you said generative AI, they talked about the traditional AI work they've been doing for decades. Whereas now they're getting much more prescriptive and what they're doing is actual generative AIs. Not only that, you know, they're talking more about what success looks like. It's one thing to transition something from POC to production. It's entirely different to transition it and to say that worked and that delivered what I wanted it to. And from what I see, customers are getting more prescriptive about not only defining and measuring that as they accelerate that adoption. And so, and I know we'll talk more about success factors and how to make sure you're doing things right. But at the intersection of this like multi-cloud and AI conversation, there's a natural connector where organizations are looking across their data centers, their public and hybrid cloud environments and trying to figure out what are the types of workloads I need to run and bear they're getting more specific and purposeful, and we just know a lot more than we did when many started down this journey a decade back. So now that that conversation is really progressing into on-prem, why on-prem? And it really comes back to the data. You'll hear me say that a lot. The data, the gravity of it, the latency associated with the things that they need to do. And then it'd be a miss of me not to tack on long-term security challenges. We're always concerned with security. But then that ongoing cost conversation, which again, we see really pivoting from just what is this cost to what am I actually going to get out of this from an ROI perspective? So let me ask you a follow-up, Mindy, if I can. You know, because you see the MIT study says everybody's failing on AI, um, which I thought that was 95% of that was overstated. But I would, when I talk to customers, they're having great successes, which somewhat aligns with your data. I, I don't know about the exact percentages, but they're having real successes in coding. The productivity um, in, in coding use cases is off the charts. A lot of sales and marketing use cases as well, but what are you finding in the customer data in terms of where they're having those successes? Yeah, in terms of what use cases. Yes. When I look at the AI use cases and I think about the things that organizations are really advancing, you know, it's sort of like in the early days with cloud conversations, we would start out and talk about software as a service. 
those were of the degree of complexity. They were some of the easiest places to get started. The coding assistance and the things that are packaged and capabilities look very similar. These are the types of workloads that you can naturally take advantage of something that's embedded within an application and shift the way that you're getting value. Basically, in a coding assistant, you're enabling your organization to get started in a much more complete and successful set of capabilities. Earlier in career, tend to really love and learn from that. But that's very different than when we look at the, the broad set of use cases where I believe we're really going to see value. And those really come back to the data. AI, from my view, is all about the data. AI loves data. It loves to consume it. It loves to create it. And so when you think about the applications in your environment, they solve different problems and they each have unique architecture requirements when you think about the compute, the storage, the networking implementation. Sure. And so what we find is one size is not going to fit all. Much like you don't have one application that solves every business problem, you're not going to have one AI use case that solves every business challenge or thing that you're looking to harness from an advantage perspective. And as those models continue to evolve, and you think about the use cases tied back to specific data sets, we're going to evolve from training into inferencing, and that's going to happen at the edge, on PCs, on smaller devices. And so while we've been on this specific path with generative AI, here comes agentic. And agentic, you know, these agentic workflows, they're going to happen in the data center. They're going to be all around you. You know, when we talk about AI, we talk about thinking about AI as a thought partner. So going back to your question in coding, initially you're using that, specific generative AI set of capabilities to help you create code faster. You might create a prompt and plug it in and ask it to do something for you. Now we're evolving from AI being sort of a tool that would do something very specific and targeted that I defined into leveraging AI as a thought partner. And that thought partner is going to be in your data center, it's going to be at the edge, and it's going to be all across all of your device. Well, and you know, that deal that Intel and NVIDIA just struck is I, we think an accelerant for uh, on-prem and enterprise AI, you've got a massive x86 install base and it just got a sort of an on-ramp into, into AI. So the, the public cloud obviously is dominated, you know, startups and enterprise uh, uh, AI initially, and certainly IT, there's momentum and growth has been there for over a decade. What are the drivers that are that are getting customers to really start deploying private AI, on-prem AI, whatever you want to call it, you know, they're, they're moving AI to the data. They're saying they don't want to move data in, into, the, into the cloud, at least for certain data. Uh, why? Is it cost? Is it performance? All of those above? What are you hearing from customers? Yeah, I hear that it's all of the above. And I mean, when I think about what we learned and what we went through in our own experience, you know, first, I think it's super important for organizations to start with the question you asked, what am I trying to accomplish? And that's not a finite, discrete answer. There's going to be multiple answers there. So one size, again, as I was saying, one size isn't going to fit all. When you think about the things that you're trying to achieve, most organizations are trying to further their automation journey. They're trying to take a set of capabilities and drive a next layer of automation on top of that to drive efficiencies, performance gains, productivity gains. And I feel like that was sort of the initial starting point for most organizations, but we're moving quickly far beyond that. As a matter of fact, I would wager if organizations aren't doing those things today, they are quickly falling in a hurry. We're now moving into the mode, as I was saying, where AI is becoming this thought partner. We're moving from doing things more efficiently that we already did, sort of that traditional take the automation steps that you're doing and automate where it makes sense to automate. This is like, how do I think about leveraging this as a, this being AI, as a way to drive incremental revenue? How do I think about AI as a way to move the needle in areas to solve problems I never could have before. You know, my favorite use cases are when you hear the real feel good ones in the medical industry. You think about healthcare and the things that they're able to find faster that they maybe never would have been able to have found before. But as we move beyond academia and core research and those types of use cases into mainstream enterprises, we're starting to find that the core traditional bones, even within Dell, and I look at the use cases where we're applying AI, sales, you think about software development, we talked about coding assistance, you think about supply chain, those core use cases, these are the bones of our company. We're leveraging generative AI and looking into Agentic for lots of different cases to actually 
solve problems we were never able to solve before in a far more efficient way. So that use case conversation is quickly evolving. And, and to me, Agentic is just sort of an accelerant on a whole different scale. Well, that may be instructive for my next question, which is, you know, what does that AI stack on-prem look like? You've got the AI factory with NVIDIA. Um, and, and so you've got, you know, the hardware, you've got the, the CUDA stack, but you're doing a lot of stuff internally as well. So I'm curious, what does that on-prem AI look like in, in a steady state? Compute, storage, networking, the data stack, governance, security, you got applications on top. At a steady state, Mindy, how do you envision that? Yeah, I would say AI is super complex. And it, you know, this isn't just an application or leveraging a data set. It's all of these things stitched together. You know, I go back to my days in the data center, and this is sort of that best case where you need solutions that really come together. It's compute, it's storage, it's multi-cloud. It doesn't live in a singular data center. It spans across. That imposes unique networking requirements. On top of that, we have models, we have automation. It's not happening, as I mentioned, just in a data center. It's on the edge. It's at personal devices. That really begs for two things from my perspective. It's solutions that more easily stitch those things together and services, which in our case is are learned from what we've done in our own journey that help bring all of this together. Together Again, it starts with the data, but when you think about the, the list of things that I just went through, Dell is one of the few vendors with breadth in industry across all of those. And, you know, Michael has publicly said, we're not looking to be a large language model provider. You don't do a lot of AI without models, which means we're going to forge partnerships of all layers and bring the breadth of our portfolio together with those partnerships. So it's really intended to remove the complexity, learning from the things that we've done in our own journey. Again, it starts with the date which means you look at the things that we're forging around the AI data platform. It's not about the volume of data, it's about quality data. So how do you get that placed where you can process it and do it in a secure way where you can protect it? A lot of that data sits on Dell technology storage and you see us really investing in power scale and object scale and driving better compression and performance for both AI workloads and non-AI workloads. And then bringing in the breadth of portfolio with things like edge and native edge. And then of course, wrapping all of that with services. I'm glad you brought it up because the a couple, two part question. Um, you think about hybrid and multi-cloud, we you know sometimes call it super cloud. You know, it's aspirational in a lot of cases, but sometimes hard to operationalize. We had Walmart in uh, earlier this week and they have this kind of innovative triplet model, but they've had to do it in as Walmart. So they have, you know, massive, you know, capabilities like JPMC. We saw JPMC at Dell Tech World this year. You know, they can actually do that engineering work to, to make hybrid and multi-cloud, super cloud work. Um, what are you seeing for adoption patterns and, and how is Dell making it, you know, simpler, especially in the context of, of AI? And the second part of this question is kind of the future of AI factories. The future has to be multi-cloud hybrid cloud, you're not going to just do it in one place or the other. So how do you see that all playing out? Yeah, so on your first question, I mean, I think it's important to start to segment the types of customers. Again, we're a big company. So let me just start because I really want to focus on enterprise, but it would be a miss of me to not start with training. You know, Dell is an infrastructure provider that sells gear to a lot of large um, types of vendors, whether they're neo clouds or, you know, global companies at massive scale, these training providers, GPU as a service providers. And so that training market is one that we're very present. That set of use cases and what they need because of the scale looks different than when you look at an enterprise. And it's sort of where you were going with a JPMC or a Walmart. And when we think about those types of customers, those large enterprise organizations, we know that they're going to do some training but they're more likely to, at scale of all of the types of generative AI workloads they run, they're more likely to take a model, do some fine tuning, and then do a lot of inferencing with it. And that's really the enterprise class portfolio. We're in those earlier days with, you know, beyond enterprise, you think MBs and, and, and small businesses, but really looking at the enterprise part of the market. For those types of customers, getting into your second question, the types of things that I see and hear from customers that they need to make that easy, they need solutions that have already been brought together. I mean, gosh, we've talked about model evolution, so I'll just pick on that one. 
these models are moving so quickly. It reminds me back to my cloud days when customers used to say, there's a new service every time I turn around and I don't know that I want to move to adopt these new services. Or there are so many that it's complex for me to know where to even get started. A lot of the work that we're doing within AI Factory is learning from the things we've applied ourselves. We've done a tremendous amount of model evaluation. We do that in our technology teams and our engineering teams. And we're taking those solutions and bringing them to our customers in a more streamlined way. That's what the AI Factory is really all about. Exciting times, Mindy. Uh, I can't wait to uh, see the next chapter. We'll see you soon uh, around the block. Uh, looking forward to uh, catching up uh, next month in, uh, in Austin. Thank you so much for coming back. Great to see you as always. Cheers, Dave. All right, you bet. Uh, and thank you for watching AI Factories, Data Centers of the Future, brought to you by Dell and NVIDIA. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back. We're at this short break. The Cube plus NYSE Wired.